Okay. So we are now, I, I've completely, you know, I, you've seen me throughout the day. I've gone out of order from what I thought I was going to do, but we can be flexible, very agile. All right, so this is around um, screen layout configuration. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, in addition to some of the new stuff that's just come out, stuff that's, that's coming soon, uh, I also wanted to cover some of the key problematic areas where we have uh, lots of questions coming in from people. We see issues that they're having, um, and you know, and there are some changes in this area. So I thought it was important to to cover at least what those were. Um, so when we're talking about screen layout configuration, um, there's a set of entities um, that are are related here. Um, basically, everything from visual profiles to the layouts themselves, button grids, um, some concepts that aren't surfaced um, so directly in the UI but are very important, such as layout zones and then how these things can be assigned and used. And I have this diagram here, which is probably nearly impossible to read from the back of the room. Uh, so I will I'll walk through it a bit. OK. Um, so OK, so here at the middle is the, is the register itself. Um, so if we kind of go in this direction, we can see that a register is associated to a device. And a device has a device type. This concept has been around previously, um, but until the fall release, um, it actually caused some problems in screen layouts and how those were assigned, designed, and, and utilized. Uh, and that this single um, enum of device type was also used to determine um, the layouts that were applicable. And since we all know that modern pause and cloud pause are the exact same application, it was causing problems where you'd actually have to create two, two layouts if you're using cloud pause versus mpause, um, where they have the same capabilities. There's no reason to do that. Um, so the first change that I want to talk about is how device type now only is impact, uh, the only impact it has now is on self-service deployment. So which package is going to be deployed? So when you're managing your devices, you can specify that it's iOS, Android, Cloud Pause will give you a URL, Windows will give you um, the MPOS package. So that's where device type is now. So the, the, the entity was there, the enum was there, um, but we've changed, we've, we've changed its meaning to only be related for, um, for device uh, self-service and device management. Um, so if we go in this direction now, we can see that we have the screen layout entity. Um, the screen layout can be assigned to the register, the store, or the worker. That's existing capabilities that we've had before, uh, where um, it basically goes from a, like a default thing. So uh, if it's set at the store, um, that'll, everyone will use that one. Unless it is set at the register level, then register will override store. Or if it's set at the worker level, which will override any of those. Um, so the scenario there is that um, if everyone in the store utilizes the same screen layout, you can set it here and, and leave it. Or if you have some registers that are used for, say, um, uh, for, for uh, like a coffee shop versus bookstore or something like that, you could do register-based layouts. Uh, or worker would be probably the most common I'm imagining, which is manager versus cashier versus stock clerk versus sales associate. Um, again, all of that's the same, but just for completeness on the, on the uh, conceptual model here. Um, Things that are new here now are around layout sizes and layout type. Um, so layout type takes the place of what device type was trying to do last time, which is basically which editor or which designer do we launch. Um, so you'll see that the designer could be EPOS, has a different designer entirely than MPOS does. Uh, and then MPOS, even though it's the same application, has compact design capabilities and full compact um, design capabilities. And the term compact um, is basically to account for phones and other small form factor devices, um, so maybe a small tablet. Um, layout sizes comes into play and is important um, so that you can actually use one screen layout, which is, again, assigned to either a store, register, or worker across multiple devices. So that's another major limitation that we had before uh, in that um, you could, in theory, assign your screen layouts to a worker. But in that case, the, all of your screen sizes better be the same size, right? So we didn't have a way before of saying, um, if you log into a monitor that's this size or log into a device that's that size to switch to that. And so now all within a single screen layout, you can de des design for multiple sizes. Um, that's also kind of a mitigation point for the fact that our screen layout itself for the transaction screen is not responsive like the rest of the application is. So everything else will go from landscape to portrait, from large screen to small screen, 
from full to compact automatically. You can even see that in the browser. If you resize your browser to a really small space and refresh, basically reloading the app, you'll get the compact experience. If you make your browser bigger, refresh, it'll go to the tablet experience. So you can see directly how the application itself is responsive um, from portrait landscape and different screen sizes, except for the transaction screen, where the main screen layout comes from. Um, and so there, you can actually design for all of those different things. I can design for portrait and landscape. I can design for large screens and small screens, but it's an explicit design for each of those. So depending on the, the devices that you have in your stores, you need to de design for those. Um, so I think that covers what I wanted to cover there. Any questions on that? Yes. Yes, okay, thank you. And I actually kind of skipped over visual profile a little bit. So um, visual profile is um, all of the settings that are needed for the application that are not um, you know, worker, register, or store related. So um, a lot of this is the stuff that happens before anyone logs in. Um, so that's where the visual profile comes, and that's largely um, theming and branding. And the question there was, can we do more colors? And yes, you, you can do more colors. I, I plan on showing you that. OK, so I know Jared had a, um, a an Iron Man um, quote in his. And completely coincidentally, um, this is not Uncle Ben's rice, by the way. Um, this is Uncle Ben, which is uh, Peter Parker, or Spider-Man's uncle. So, um, so also in the Marvel uh, realm, and com completely coincidentally. But really, it, it says a lot there. And that's with great power. There must also come great responsibility. So we have these design capabilities. You can make your screen layout look like anything you want almost. You can use any color schemes you want. You can use any images you want. So extremely very, very powerful. But please don't underestimate the impact of a bad screen layout. <laughs> um, it's, it's, the, it's the part of the application that every user uses all of the time. I, I do not underestimate the importance of that. Spend more time there than you think you need to spend and get it right for the user. Make it visually appealing. So there, the user will see it. The, the, the user's customers will see it. The user will see it every day. It will have impact on their performance because it's the application that they're using all the time. right? So, so, so put some thought into it. Put some effort into it. Uh, if the retailer has a design and a marketing team that's typically used for, uh, for branding and for merchandising the store, involve them and try to get them involved in merchandising and, and designing for the point of sale as well. Use their color schemes, use their logos, use their images as much as possible, and please take extra extra care in that. It'll it'll you'll get a lot more and better results from it. So we've seen it firsthand where we've worked with customers that have had basically the out of the box, um, not even demo data layouts, but unfortunately the seed data layouts. So the seed data layouts that you get are basically the bare minimum so that the application will run. Everything's basically one color, and it's just a bunch of functions that have been thrown onto the screen. And we've seen users trying to go live with those. Um, so you can imagine the experience that they're going to have. Um, like, this thing's not very easy to use. I can't find anything. Like, why is this organized this way? And it's because almost no thought was put into those whatsoever. They're used for testing and for the bare minimum for the application to work. Um, our demo data, by the way, it might look a lot nicer, but I would also not recommend using that for your customers. Our demo data is basically everything in the kitchen sink. Right? We're trying to show every, op every, uh, every operation, whether it's applicable for a fashion retailer, a grocery retailer, uh, a coffee shop. Right? We're just, if we have an operation, we try to stick it in there somewhere. It makes, the com it makes the application seem a lot more complicated than it needs to be. So spend time with them. Find out what operations they use. Find out what operations they use most often. Find out what operations they use together based on their role. All of that. Please, please, please. Um, everyone will be much happier. Uh, if you put some time into the screen layouts. Also, that said, if you have implementations where you have done this or not, send me your screenshots, please. I want to see, in my inbox, I want to see screenshots of people's screen layouts all the time. I think, it, I think it's great. I mean, I won't share them out. It's all, you know, it's, um, if you need to obfuscate branding so you don't know who the customer is, then that's all fine. Um, but we'll learn from that, too. We'll learn to see what works well on the application, what doesn't. Um, if, if, uh, if things are happening that we think shouldn't be happening, then we can pr provide more training and more guidance and, and make the tools better to be able to do this also. So that's, I'll, I'll get down off of my soapbox now, but uh, we've seen some unfortunate things in screen layouts. <laughs> um, so uh, my, my, my request is, you know, with that great power, uh, use it responsibly. Uh, so I'm going to get into the application now and talk about some of these. Oh, unfortunately, I have to, to switch over to a different machine for this. 
Um, hopefully, this doesn't slow things down too much. <laughs> he, he's right, actually. So Anil can't get any other work done because I've I've put his machine over here. Um, so I, for some reason, I have a very strange issue with the screen layout designer on my computer only, and no one else can repro it. Um, so since I'm doing screen layouts, this is where we're going to start. OK, uh, so visual profile came up. OK, my mouse is working too. That's great. Uh, no, it's not working. Uh-oh, Anil. Oh, oh, there you go. OK. I should look behind me. you got to remember to look behind you. OK, there we go. OK, so we're going to start with visual profile. And again, I'm going to navigate this way because it's faster, um, but typically not the way that um, maybe, maybe they do. Most users, if you know what you're looking for, it's a very fast way to do it. Um, I'll also you know, um, I'll talk a little bit about our, our demo data here. Um, you know, our demo data has uh, Fabricam, Contoso, and AdventureWorks. Uh, we've, again, it's the kind of the kitchen sink approach. Um, the thought is, is that real retailers won't have this many button grids and this many screen layouts and this many visual profiles. Um, but, um, and so I think some of our design takes that assumption that if you did have many, uh, as this many button grids and this many screen layouts, um, our, our user interface and our tooling would be better for that. Um, so um, so we're, we're definitely hearing feedback from people having difficulties with demo data and finding the right screen layout. Um, it'd be interesting to find out if that's happening for, um, for real life users also. Um, the quick thing here is what has changed. Uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll cover a few different things here. Um, um, the, the theme is basically the, the background color that you're going to see um, for where there isn't an image. Um, it will impact the, the, the text and the, the basic application background where we'll invert things. Um, so it's not quite white. It's a little bit gray. Um, so if you were looking for white, that's, that's not it. Um, if I were to switch it to a, to a dark theme, um, then it goes to almost black, and then the text becomes white. It'll inverse there. Whoops. Um, so that's what the, the theming does. And actually, if this, I'm not sure about this particular build. Let me check. No. OK, if you're running a, a debug build, there's actually developer mode, where you can actually go and change all of this right in here without having to change any of the data. I thought that would be cool to be able to show you that way, but um, that, that's not the case. Um, so. Um, so for some of the areas um, where we, we, um, we want to have images that don't just stretch or scale, um, because that'll, that'll cause some bad results, you can actually specify different images for different sizes. So for landscape, portrait, um, and compact, you can specify different uh, login backgrounds. Um, and you can also um, use a background image, too. So in this case, where you're seeing just this flat gray here, you could actually put an image in the background, um, some kind of a texture or a gradient. Uh, or if you did want a specific color here, you could actually use a very small image that tiles across that would provide a, a color in the background also. So lots of different options and, and branding things there. But with great power comes great responsibility. Um, we've seen some pretty crazy busy things where I'm, I can't imagine how anyone could actually use it. It just, uh, like the image behind it was just so bold um, that everything else kind of just blended in. Um, so just try to be tasteful. <laughs> um, uh, another thing to consider here, actually, is that these images um, you know, provide a, a beautiful, very rich experience. Um, try to keep the image size down, especially if you're using CloudPause. Um, browsers have a limit that, um, and file size that they can use for storage for uh, their caching. Um, so what we'll do is um, if, if the browser's offline cache gets exceeded, um, we will start dropping these images first, by the way. It will log it in the event viewer so you'll know that's what's happening. But if for some reason in CloudPause your images aren't loading on your login screen and your app background, it's because their file sizes are too big. Um, we don't provide an error to the, message, to the user because the cashier is probably not going to be able to do anything about it. Um, but we do log it into the event viewer. And for the most part, if you keep these images relatively small, there's, there's no issue um, that you need to worry about. Uh, I don't know offhand. Um, just yeah, I, I can probably get that to you, but it depends again on the on the screen size that you're using. If you're using like one of the giant like uh, the pixel cent or the new the, the what are they called now? Those giant 60 inch touch screens that Microsoft sells, um, then you're going to need a pretty high resolution image that's going to look decent there. 
Uh, if it's a small form factor device, then you can go with a pretty low resolution image. Uh, so it all, it, it all depends. Um, the other thing is that we've changed in this release. Um, the accent color and the header color can be different. Um, so here, my header is black. My accent color, in this case, is green. Um, so that used to just be one color, and we, we, we can now separate those two. Uh, and the colors can be any color you'd like. Um, so we have our defaults out of the box. Um, but if I go to POS, um, not used to this keyboard, POS accent colors, you can define your own colors now, right? So it's just a simple RGB um, value that you do, that you can create, and now those colors can be used for either the header or the the uh, accent color or both. You can create your own colors for that. Okay, I think that covers um, visual profile. So now we want to talk about the screen layouts themselves. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to do a little bit of bouncing around here, and this is some of the optimizations we can do within the UI, but um, just to, to, to get the, the, um, the concepts down. Um, our demo data has um, a cheat sheet available that I can try to make available to you guys on the wiki of how, what do these codes mean. Like how to, so I know how to find my Fabricam ones pretty quickly. Um, so basically, F is Fabricam, C is Contoso, A is AdventureWorks. Uh, three means it's the third iteration. Um, S, uh, CSH is cashier, manager, stock clerk, that kind of thing. So there's, there's, some, there's some rhyme to the reason, based, uh, both on the, the, um, uh, the screen layouts and the button grids. We have a document for that. It just uh, it needs to get uh, published. But what I want to show here is that um, um, there's no longer application type on here. Um, so that actually goes to the screen layout itself, where we now call it layout type. Uh, and you have multiple sizes for a single screen layout. So now I can take this screen layout, which is for my Fabricam manager, and I can assign that to them. And now it doesn't matter which device they use, from a phone to a high-resolution display, it's the same screen layout that they can use, and we can, we can render it appropriately. Um, uh, Prabhu's session, and I actually have a slide over here. When I go back, I can talk about it. Uh, in Prabhu's session, they, uh, we, he shows you the diagonal that's calculated, and that's so that we can automatically pick the best one. So based on the, 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 the screen size that you're using, we'll get the, the resolution, we'll calculate the diagonal, and then we will show the largest, the, the biggest size um, without going over. Uh, so it might be closer in pixels, but if it's too big, we will fall back on the smaller of them so that we, we can ensure that all the content fits, even if that means that there's going to be some dead space there. Yes? Will the image be resized automatically based on that? Uh, no. Oh, the background image? Um, the background image tiles. So keep that in mind when you're creating your background image. You want to create something that tiles well. Um, so it will repeat or tile depending on the, the direction that you're, you're thinking of. Um, so no, it does not. We don't. We, we want to avoid stretching or scaling things as much as possible because you can you can skew things and they look weird if they're pinched or stretched. And if you scale things, then you can run into resolution issues where things look bad. Um, so we try to do that as little as possible. Although we know it can make things easier, it doesn't necessarily look as good. Um, the other thing um, I want to talk about while I'm here are these layout zones. Um, that, that um, currently apply to button grids and images. We have plans to support other things, and I'll show you a little bit about that as well. Um, but we're going to start off by creating a new layout size. Um, so that is also its own new entity. Um, there it is, layout size. And this is a pretty simple entity, in which case you're giving it a name. Um, test. Or actually, I have a better one. Um, this can be for a Surface Book. I happen to remember what this is. So Surface Book is, is certainly a full-size um, um, application, full-size device. Uh, so I'll choose that. And I know that a Surface Book's resolution is 3,000 by 2,000. Um, so I'm going to put in 1,500 by 1,000. And now you'll ask me why. Um, <laughs> OK, so, there, that, so what's happening nowadays uh, is that um, displays are getting higher and higher resolution, the pixel density becomes very, very important. Um, so if you were to run a Surface Book at its native resolution, the font and everything would be so tiny that you wouldn't be able to see it, but you still want that really crisp look of a high resolution display. So operating systems across the board, iOS, Android, and Windows, have moved to the scaling um, um, uh, concept. And I can probably show it even on um, a NILS 
here, although I think his will probably be set to 100, which is, yeah, it's, it's not quite as, as, um, as relevant as what I'm talking about. Um, but you go into your advanced display settings. These are the actual pixels. So his display resolution is 1600 by 900. Uh, and because that's at within a reasonable range, Windows basically says that's fine. You can leave that at 100%. Um, my Surface Pro 3, the default here is for 150%, right? So there's a, I mean, it's, it's simple enough math, but I have a slide that will show you how to come up with that effective resolution versus the actual resolution. So that's a very important thing that I don't believe is, is, is well documented anywhere that I wanted to make sure that you guys understood. Um, so I'm creating a new layout for the Surface Book. I want to use its effective pixels, not its actual pixels. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the difference between full and compact also, but I've now created my new size. So I can go back to my screen layout and I can create a new layout for that. Screen layout. Okay, um, so I'll go back to my Fabricam manager. And I will add a new size to this because we, we are starting to deploy Surface Books now in our store. And I will choose that one. It brings in the resolution, so good and bad. You'll notice that the relationship in the schema for the button grids and the images are per screen layout. So good in that you can be very flexible. I, obviously, I can't use all the same button grids and layouts on a very small device as I can on a big one, right? So you might need to create different button grids or limit which button grids you use. So good in flexibility, but bad, and now I have to go and set all those things up again. Um, so even though things are very similar, um, we do make you go ahead and select those again. Uh, and that's where my, my little cheat um, comes in again. I happen to know that my Fabricam stuff is going to, oops. Uh, oh, that's the, the wrong one. Sorry, layout zone. I need to choose uh, like a welcome screen is the first layout. And then I know it's going to be like Fabricam, welcome screen one. And then if it comes in cashier and manager, then I know that there's a different version for that button grid for the manager than for the cashier. So. Uh, you know, this is demo data stuff, but if you take these kind of as best practices, that might, might make it easier for you, too. Um, so this is the first button grid for the welcome screen for Fabricam. This one's for the cashier, and this one's for the manager. Um, if you want to be able to modify our demo data, then that's where that cheat sheet that I have will come into play. And I won't go ahead and set all these up. I just want to talk about the different types. Um, so button grids can be surfaced on the welcome screen. They can be surfaced on the transaction screen. So there's two different layout zones there. And the seed data gives you five of each, but that's, you're not limited there. Um, you can actually do more than that. So let me choose the first one for the transaction screen. That's also for the manager. And now I've got my actions for the transaction screen. Um, we don't surface this entity through the menu, unfortunately. Uh, so you have to get there by clicking on the reference here. And now I can get into the layout zones, and you can create your own. Um, so transaction screen goes one through five. Um, so I can actually create transaction screen six if I need to. Right, so just kind of follow the same convention or not. You can call it whatever you want. Um, you'll also see a glimpse into where we wanted to go with this. We actually wanted to be able to surface reports directly in the UI also by defining the zones for those. That just hasn't made it yet. Um, but I can specify that this is a grid and that this is for uh, modern pause. So there's a little bit of a hold over here where actually cloud pause and modern pause doesn't matter. Um, but you can see that this is a little bit of a, um, you know, an Easter egg or, or a little bit of a, um, uh, a pro user kind of hack uh, to be able to now have additional uh, transaction screen zones, and that'll go for images, which actually we even do in our demo data. I think our image, our demo data uses six images instead of five, um, so you can do that across the board for any of the layout zones. Um, so that's. That's layout sizes, layout zones, and now I can get into the designs themselves. Um, so if I go ahead and open the designer, um, I've copied this to the, I put this in my clipboard here so I can log in quicker. Um, you are aware that we used click once for this. So the first time that you launch this on a, on a machine from a particular environment, it'll install itself. And then the good news there is it will always keep itself up to date. If new bits are deployed, you'll get the latest designer automatically. The bad news, unfortunately, is kind of this AAD um, authentication that has to happen there and the fact that you have to log in every time. So previously, we were able to cache those credentials, and it caused nothing but problems, especially going from, from the, um, environment to environment. So unfortunately, that we're not caching them anymore or like the checkbox to remember. Um, but this is my 1500 by 1000 um, screen layout. It's completely blank. And now you have the controls that you can add to it. 
um, will go pretty quickly. Some of these are pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, but the drag and drop capability of drop it onto the canvas, make it as big as you'd like it to be, place it wherever you want it to be. Uh, it does snap to this grid. So if I zoom in on this grid, this is that four pixel grid that Prabhu talked about, which used to be a 10 pixel grid. And you can see it will snap to the grid. And maybe you can't see that. I can see it pretty well. Uh, it will snap to the grid to make sure that you can align things. And the zoom capability is super important for being able to do that. Uh, it may look good enough, but when the user's looking at it all the time, if things don't line up properly, then, um, then they'll notice it, definitely. So use the zoom capability to be able to, um, to, to zoom in and, and, uh, uh, and get things aligned properly. It will snap to the grid. Um, different types of controls will also have this customize if you right click. And now this is where we can specify which columns are in there. So if we want the item, the quantity, and the price. And in this case, just like in the transaction screen, we have different tabs. So I can actually set this for, um, for lines, for payments, and for delivery, the various columns that'll be there. And through the extensibility work, you can actually add your own columns into this and design for it. Um, so that's, that's actually, um, they're probably talking about that in the other room or they probably already have. Um, so that's your, 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 your transaction grid. Um, totals panel is pretty straightforward, and this is another situation where you can choose what's going to be where. So you can say, I want, whoops, not familiar with this keyboard. Um, you can choose these things over here, these things over there. You can reorder them if you want things to look like they're going to add up properly or not. Um, and then that will basically determine the content of the, the totals panel. Um, the customer card, same idea. There's some limitations to this one. Uh, but you can show more or less information on the customer panel. Um, and then certain aspect of this is fixed, but you can actually, again, to make things line up, you can change the width if you need to be able to fill a gap properly. Um, the, the, the vertical space is fixed based on the, the content, though. Uh, yes? Um, so basically, it's, it's not going to size. You'll see that it's anchored. Right, so if I give it more space, it'll you'll anchor things. Or yep. So if on the on the um, so on the visual profile, something I didn't talk about is that we do have normal and large fonts. Um, that only applies to the transaction screen, by the way. So um, so on a larger display, you'll probably want to set that font size to larger. Yep. Um, okay. So that's the customer. That's the receipt. There's the total pane. Um, I'm going to skip tab control for a second. You can drop an image directly onto the transaction. Um, you can right click and customize this image. And then you can say, hey, where, where are my images? That comes from this definition back here, right? So in my, my screen layout, I populate which images are going to be utilized in my screen layout. So I can have as many as you need. Seed data gives you five. Demo data, we've added six. Let's just say, for example, that's the image I want to add there. Um, then that would be the image that would become available to me should I uh, be choosing the image here. Right? So I'd have to save that, and then, then it would show here. Um, so that's how images are put directly onto the canvas. Um, I'm going to come back to these. Button grids are the next kind of most common. You'll also see that the button grid doesn't render exactly what, how your button grid is. Um, but this template is actually important. So you can, you can think of this template as a way, and you can see how it repeats. Um, but if you've created a one by one button grid, then that's the size that you need, one by two. So even that might be one button in your button grid, that's the size you need. Um, so there's some, there's some reasoning behind how this is laid out as well. Um, and you can use this to make sure that your button grid is going to fit on the, on the screen. Um, the buttons themselves do not scale like they did in, in EPOS. Yes, question in the back. For the number pad? Yeah, it's just about to get to the number pad. Um, so the, the, um, the button grid, you can actually choose to show the title of the button grid above it or not. Um, so that would actually be the, the name of the button grid into the UI. Um, so this is putting button grids directly on the canvas. Um, again, by default, you can put five of these on here. Um, if you need more, then you can add additional button grids um, into that area. Um, that's directly on the canvas, and button grids can link to each other, right? So I could actually just put one button grid on here, and then this button on the button grid could link to another, another button grid. So lots of possibilities and really you know, in-depth uh, capabilities there. Um, the number pad control has changed, actually, in this release quite a bit. 
Um, so you'll notice that it changes in the application to be context sensitive based on the type of data that you're entering. That was not the case before. Uh, and it is also now sizable to answer your question, um, but only um, one direction, like the yeah, so like the um, like the customer pad. So there's there's some reasons behind these things, um, but this is kind of currently the the state that it's in right here. Um, like that, you could actually also um, show the title or the prompt above it. You can also actually hide the buttons and have just an input panel. So if you don't have a touch screen, you're using a keyboard and a mouse, you can get that real estate back but still have the capabilities of having the, the input panel there. Um, so I'm not sure how common that's used nowadays, but, um, but you can actually uh, get rid of the on-screen number pad it, itself. Um, and then a couple more, um, which would be the recommended products, which is new with the... Um, with the, the machine learning piece that Ashish talked about. So now this is a control that can be dragged and dropped directly onto the canvas. Uh, and you can specify how much real estate you want to be able to show or how many different products. This will wrap around nicely, uh, depending on, on how you want to lay this out. Um, that's the recommended products. And again, you can add the, the title into that one. Um, and then also custom control. In previous versions, you could put a single custom control on, and now you can see how you can put multiple custom controls onto the transaction. Um, the, the control itself and its capabilities come through extensibility, but now you can at least um, map out the space for it where it's going to live within your, within your screen layout, so you can account for that real estate. Um, the last piece I want to talk about here is the the tab control. So what this allows you to do is to nest content. So you only have so much real estate that you can use. So now I can create a tab control. And in that tab control, I can have multiple tabs. And you can put the tabs on the left or the right. So if I'm putting this along the right edge, putting the tabs over here where my thumbs can get to it would, be, would make sense. Uh, or I could put the tabs over on the left if this is going to be on the left-hand side so your thumbs can get to it. And what we intend to do is actually allow you to put the tabs on the top and bottom too, especially on a small form factor device that you may be using in portrait or landscape mode where you want to put these across the top or across the bottom, but it's not quite there yet. And then within this tab, for each one, you can specify what the content is. Um, so I can specify an image for it. I can specify the label. Uh, and then in this case, maybe I want to put my customer card in that tab. And then just like you can on the canvas, you can customize that, cus that customer card. So in the event you do track customer information, but I don't need to be staring at their address the whole time, uh, you can just stick that under a tab where you can get to it where you need it, um, but it doesn't take up that precious real estate on the transaction screen. Um, so within the demo data, again, we try to fit as much stuff in there as we can. Sometimes that makes it look crowded or too, too complicated. Um, and we only have so many variations to show what's possible, but just gives you an idea that you can really you know, kind of tailor this to meet their needs. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically the various types of controls. Uh, and then there's portrait and landscape, right? So this is not responsive like the rest of the application is. If you're browsing products or you're looking at product details or customer details and you go from portrait to landscape, the content will shift around intelligently. Um, the transaction screen will not. So if you want to be able to move from portrait to layout, then you have to define both layouts. And this doesn't have to be the same content. So perhaps when you're in portrait, it's optimized for these types of these types of operations. If you go to landscape, it could be optimized for different types of operations. It, it depends on what you want to do. And then Prabhu also talked yesterday about the ability to import and export the layout. What that exports is this. Basically, this, there's an XML definition for what content is where. Uh, that's what gets exported. It's not, the, um, it's not the entire screen layout and all of its definition. So you can create that layout and you can share it with your friends. Um, but it does not do all of the referencing of which button grids and which images and all that kind of stuff. Okay, um, so now, yes? So you can select which start screen you use. Is there a way to disable the welcome screen so you're only dealing with the transaction? Not currently, no. no. So you can, yeah, so thanks for pointing that out. This is something we added a little while ago. Um, for a cashier who's going to um, just sell, then why have them go to a welcome screen all the time so you can default to the transaction screen instead of the welcome screen? There's currently not a way to remove the welcome screen. Um, we have plans for ways to be able to do that, but not currently. Yeah? So I know it's, it's, uh, it's 5.43. I could, I could go on. Um, <laughs> um, it, there's, there's more to talk about as far as um, button grids go. Uh, button grids haven't changed, but there's a lot of tips and tricks for being able to create effective button grids that I'd love to share with you. 
Um, what has changed, which is important, is this compact layout. So let me just take one second to show you this, and then we can go to, geez, uh, we can go to questions. Oh, um, there we go. Nope. Yes. <laughs> no, but thanks for pointing that out. Uh, <laughs> no. So here's the thing. With Button Grid Designer, we completely just leveraged what we already had for EPOS. The designer itself, whereas the layout designer for MPOS was completely rewritten as a WPF application, Taylor built for MPOS and all of its capabilities. Button Grid Designer is a let's use what we've already got kind of approach. The positive spin on that <laughs> is if you have EPOS and MPOS, you can create your button grids once. <laughs> But anyway, um, wait, what what was that? Well, so MPOS was available in 2012 when you could actually use EPOS and MPOS side by side. Um, so there was a positive spin and some value there. Um, to be honest, we we there, it's an area where we we sorely need to spend some time and, and redo the button grid designer. Um, there's a lot of usability issues there. Um, there's operations that so in theory there shouldn't be any operations in in in, in MPOS that aren't or in EPOS that aren't available in MPOS, except for, uh, yeah, there's a couple that have just been deprecated all up. But for the most part, functional parity, they should be there. But the other issue is that there are some that are only available in certain regions. So there are some, um, some Russian and Indian and maybe even Brazilian um, localized features um, that show up in your, in your, in your button grid designer, um, but you might not have access to those capabilities to ba based on your configuration. So there's locale, there's version, there's client, there's all those kind of things, and right now the button grid operate, it just gives you a list of all the operations. We'd love to be able to fix that. Um, this is the layout designer now for compact. So this would be for a small for a phone or small tablet. So if you have a like a six inch tablet or a seven inch tablet, it's running full Windows, you have the option there to actually run it as MPOS, meaning like the full on layout, like like um, the like uh, like right here. All right, so all of this capability on a very small tablet. Or you could actually run it like it's a phone, which in my opinion is the much better experience because some of these controls get to be very small on a very small device like that. Um, but you have, again, with, with great power comes great responsibility. Um, so the screen layout designer for Compact is, is different. You do not have all of the, the drag and drop capabilities, but you can, con um, you can configure these things. So the transaction grid itself, same idea. You can right-click and customize. So one thing that the, the compact has that the full doesn't at this point, and that's something that we will address, is the ability to actually specify what the informa additional information is in those expanded rows. So in MPOS, that's hard-coded. Um, we, we will put this information in there, whether you want it there or not. In compact, you can actually specify that the, this is the information that shows up in the, um, in the additional rows. It's the same application. It's the same UI. It's the same control. It's just we didn't get the, we didn't get it there for full yet, and it was more important to have it in compact, um, because the reality is, is you're probably not going to be able to show more than three columns in an, in a, in an effective way. Um, so it's more important to be able to specify what's shown in those rows there. But generally, it's the it's the same idea there. Um, so I'm showing which columns I have, how much space I want to give those columns, and what the difference is on the rows. Um, same thing goes for your totals panel here. So, you, so just like in the application, you can expand and collapse that. And then you can specify what is going to be in your totals panel, which may be very different on a phone than it is on a full screen. You might not want to put all the details there if you don't, if you don't need to. Um, so basically, um, that would be the, the, the extent there. Um, the rest of it is some, some areas that we plan to improve in the future. Um, but for now, it's basically determining which columns and rows and what your, your totals are going to be there. Um, the, the button grids on a phone are accessed through an option in the command bar or the app bar, and those are basically going to be the button grids that you have defined in the screen layout. Um, they will just go basically in sequential order. Um, and for a phone, there's not really a lot of reason to have multiple other than if you're just reusing them. You could simply just create a single button grid that would um, probably work better for a phone. Um, but if I go up into here, you can see that um, you know we've basically re we've reused some of these or created a couple of compact versions of them. So these are the um, the button grids that'll be on the welcome screen as well as the the transaction screen here. Um, <laughs> okay. So the only thing I I know I went very quick and I know it's difficult for you to see and it's been a long day. The only thing I haven't shown you is some of the button grid tips and tricks, but it honestly it hasn't changed. So. What do you think? 
Should we? Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Um, actually, I, I, I have a quick slide. I mentioned the slide. I want to be able to show it to you over here. I'm sorry. It's, I think it's useful. It, it's, it's about the... Um, sorry. Here, is it up there? No. Okay. Whoops. Oh, darn. Okay. This is that screen resolution, uh, screen size, and scale factor that I talked about. Uh, so I showed you where... Oh, jeez. Sorry. When you, when you rush, you make mistakes. OK. Um, so this is the very simple uh, situation here. There's actually great online resources to be able to find all this information. That's all I did. I just did a quick um, search. And you can find what the actual resolution is, what the effective resolution is for many common devices. So there's lots of great design resources out there that have that. But if you don't know what it is, just simply right click on and if it's Windows, right click in there. Find out what the, what the resolution is and what that pixel density is. Or in Windows case, they use a, a scaling factor instead. So instead of calling it pixel density of 1.5, they say it's 150% zoom or is it 150% scale. Uh, and then you can take what the actual resolution is, do the little bit of math, and find out what the effective pixels are. Another thing to keep in mind is depending on how you're running the application. right? So if this is the entire screen size, but you're not running the app full screen, then take that into account too. So a Windows 10 app can run with a title bar, or it can run full screen without a title bar. So if you're going to design with title bar in mind, keep that in mind. Uh, same thing with the, the um, what's it called on the bottom? The, the task bar down at the bottom, right? So are you running full screen? Are you auto hiding the task bar? So you'll, you'll run into situations there if you don't account for that. This is gonna be the full size, and you'll wanna account for those, those differences. We try to do as best we can in the demo data, but we can't account for all those different situations. So sometimes you go into a demo and there's going to be some dead space at the bottom or things aren't going to fit quite right. If you have time, you can always go and fix those things for your particular device or the projector that you're using ahead of time. Good? Okay. Thanks.